What is up guys, Jordan here with the Deck Box, coming back to you with more PTCGO content. And today we're actually gonna be looking at a list that um, for some time was actually considered dead because um, with the, not only rotation of Forest of Giant Plants, but then also the ban of Forest of Giant Plants really made this deck just kinda very lackluster um, until people started to realize that it works just the same as any other stage two deck. And of course the list we're talking about, you can see it on your screen, is uh, the Decidueye and Nine Tails deck. Um, and obviously, one of the main cards that made this deck run before was Forest of Giant Plants. It was ridiculously good um, being able to just get your Decidueye up and running, maybe one, two, or three Decidueye up and running on your first turn uh, and just start putting out Feather Arrows and even donking in some cases. People are making donk decks out of this. It was insane. So they had to ban that card. Just, you know, makes sense, I guess. Uh, kind of a downer for... For me personally, and I know Erica as well, we were planning on playing Decidueye Nine Tails and Expanded this year, and it did not uh, work that way, but that's fine. So, actually, a few weeks before this uh, deck started being brought back up again and people were playing at tournaments, I had actually started working on it um, on PTCGO and playing it and realizing, hey, this isn't a bad deck, because I thought to myself, you know, Guardi, Metagross, they're stage twos, they do really well, um, and their strong suit is their ability. Um, and of course that's what Decidueye's strong suit is, is its ability. It's got a decent attack as well, but its ability really helps it out and helps it hit right numbers. So I was like, it's, it's got to still be workable somehow. And then sure enough, a couple weeks later, people are showing up at League Cups with them and, and top cutting and things like this. So I'm really happy that that's working out for them. Uh, a little sad that I'm late to the party on it, but that's okay. Uh, I wasn't wrong. That's all that matters. So uh, without further ado or introduction, I'm going to just jump right into the list, show you my 60 cards that I've been playing, um, and uh, get some matches on, on the ladder and, and see if we can make it to the top of this thing. So, excuse me, of course we do run our 424 Decidueye line, has the Feather Arrow ability, being able to put two damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon. Razor Leaf for a Grass and a Double Colorless, doing 90 damage, 120 with a Choice Band, not a terrible number to hit. Two-shotting uh, pretty much every GX out there. And then Hollow Hunt, the GX attack. Put three cards from your discard pile into your hand. You cannot use more than one GX attack per turn. Um, so this is the, <clears throat> excuse me, this is one of the main focuses of our deck. It's not always the main attacker. It, it really depends on the matchup. Um, and that's why I really like playing Decidueye paired with Ninetales. Uh, because obviously Decidueye is weak to fire. And Ninetales counters fire. So they kind of pair well together to counterbalance each other. And then in certain matchups, Decidueye will hit better numbers. Uh, maybe if you're against, up, up against a water box deck, Decidueye will be your main attacker, using that Feather Arrow to hit just like the perfect numbers. Um, but another thing I want to point out, we're most likely not going to be using Hollow Hunt GX as our GX attack in this deck. We will be using Ninetales GX, uh, Ice Path uh, uh, GX, which moves all damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it can essentially do 200 damage. That's why we're not going to be using uh, Decidueyes as much. Um, and I'll explain a little bit further why we're not going to in a little bit. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But those are our two main attackers, Decidueye and then Ninetales. I'll talk about the other attack it will use, Ice Blade. This attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply weakness and resistance for bench Pokemon. So you can see how these two pair well together as far as the sniping goes. Uh, they can get um, some nice KOs. They can get around uh, certain walls like... Uh, Baby Nine Tails, or even the new Hoopa from Shining Legends. You'll notice we don't play any non-GX attackers in this list. We don't need to. Decidueye's um, ability can hit Hoopa and Nine Tails, so it's not a big deal. And Alola Nine Tails can just snipe around to hit the other Pokemon on their bench, uh, so we can still be taking KOs, not get walled too badly. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Obviously, Blizzard Edge is the other attack for Ninetales. We won't be using that in this deck. We do not run Water Energy, so obviously it won't work. Uh, then, paired with those, we do have Tapu Koko, Flying Flip Attack. I take back what I said. We do have an on GX attacker, uh, Tapu Koko. I wouldn't really consider Koko an attacker, per se. I know that sounds weird. He does do damage, but he's more of just a setup guy. Uh, getting your opponent's Pokemon within the right you know, numbers to hit. What you want to do is you want to start with one of these guys at the beginning, get a DCE on them, and just start spreading on their bench, especially if it's one of these Stage 1 or Stage 2 decks like Galissapod, uh, Garb, Gardevoir, Metagross, whatever the case may be, especially against Metagross and Gardevoir. Get them up to 60 with your uh, flying flips and feather arrows 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to follow up with your Espeon EX with Miraculous Shine. For one colorless energy, devolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon and put the high stage evolution card <coughs> excuse me, on it into your opponent's hand. This is an incredible attack. Um, this card came out in Breakpoint. Not a lot of stage 1s and stage 2s back then. Or There were a few stage 1s, not as many stage 2s. Now stage 2s are everywhere. Espeon EX is so much stronger now. Uh, pretty valuable card and what's another great use of this card too is you don't even necessarily have to take KOs with it you could really just disrupt your opponent uh, for instance if you're up against a Gardevoir deck and they have just piled on a ton of energy onto a Gardevoir that evolved from a Routes with a Rare Candy all you have to you, you mar Miraculous Shine and the chances that they're going to have another Rare Candy just ready to go is not very high especially if they've already played through all those and now they just have this route sitting up there with a bunch of energy and it's going to take them two more turns to get it evolved back up so you could really slow them down a bit um, and potentially keep yourself alive to take those ko's um, so what we do is we'll spread the damage with decidui and um, nine tails and then coco's flying flip bring in espion ex take multiple knockouts um, potentially taking three four or five prizes whatever the case may be and then of course we do run two tapu lele with the Wonder Tag ability. I may bump this to three in the future. Uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my previous videos. I love playing um, three Tapu Lele now. I didn't think I would. I, I kind of thought for a little bit it may be a little excessive and not necessary, but uh, I'm seeing in these other lists that it just makes so much sense to do it. So I may bump that to three in the future and try to find a spot for it. We do only run two Field Blower. Um, I want to bump this to three as well because uh, our deck is, it's not extremely reliant on abilities but it's fairly reliant on abilities um with with uh garbo toxin garb out there um blocking up our decidueye's ability it can cause some issues however in the matches i've played against it it really hasn't hasn't really caused any problems because uh nine tails can come out and just ice blade twice um on a garbo toxin garb and it's not a big deal and, and you're good to go <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, you just kind of work with it that way if you need to. It hasn't really held me up in the past. We do play one Nest Ball. This is, of course, just to get our Rallet, Coco, Espeon, Vulpix, whatever basic we want. Four Rare Candy to get our Decidueyes up and running. One Rescue Stretcher to retrieve any Pokemon that we may have discarded to begin with. Uh, what I love doing with this, especially if it's in a really clutch spot, and again, I might bump this to two. I have a lot of 61st cards that I would love to have in this deck, but it's just, I don't have the space for it right now. Um, but what I like doing with this is, if a Lele was KO'd or discarded for whatever reason, using a Rescue Stretcher in, in a tight spot to just bring up a Lele out of nowhere is really, really fun to do, and it uh, kind of catches your opponent off guard. One special charge, this is the other reason that we don't play Decidueye GX's uh, GX attack. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you don't need special charge in that deck because Decidueye can just get your energies back. That's true, but like I said, I'd rather use Ninetales GX attack and just play one special charge to get my DCEs back in a tight spot. It, like I said, it's worked so far uh, pretty well for me, so I do play one of those. Three Ultra Ball. This is, of course, to get our Decidueye, Dartrix, Lele, Ninetales, whatever the case may be. Uh, mostly we'll be using that for our, our uh, Lele's to get them in tight spots. Acerola, we do have a Stage 1 and Stage 2, both with pretty tanky HPs, 210 and 240 respectively. So they can take quite a bit of damage, and we can just Acerola them right back up and really frustrate our opponents. Um, always great to deny prizes. Two Bridget, this is just to guarantee that we get some Rowlet and some Vulpix out to start. Or actually, preferably, depending on what we start with, we'll get a Rowlet, Vulpix, Coco have a DCE and have Coco up ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. Uh, three Gizmas. This is really just to stall Pokemon in the active while the Sidui continues to snipe or Coco continues to spread, whatever the case may be. Uh, if we can get something stuck in the active, then we can really start uh, stacking, stacking numbers on our opponent. Three N and three Sycamore for our draw supporters. Um, obviously, the best draw supporters in the game. Have to keep it at three at least for now. And then we are playing one Olivia. Um, this is a card that I'm actually kind of surprised it hasn't seen a lot of play. I mean, it makes sense that it hasn't because we do have better uh, searches. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys. Um, <clears throat> we have our ball search, of course, that allows us to get Pokemon, whether it's Nest Ball, Heavy Ball, Ultra Ball, that allows us to get our Pokemon. What Olivia allows us to do is to search for two Pokemon GX and put them into our hand. 
So <clears throat> obviously in this deck, we're very heavily reliant on our Decidueyes and our Ninetales. So it, it just made sense to me. I was playing Timer Ball for a little bit, um, but so often you only get one heads, if anything, which is fine, but I'd rather just guarantee it. Uh, you do have to give up your supporter slot, but you do guarantee that you're going to get them. So sometimes you can get two Decidueye and just slap them down immediately and uh, add an extra 40 damage to your uh, your output. So that is why I do play Olivia for now. And she's actually come in pretty handy. Uh, I expect um, potentially for her to see more play in the future. <clears throat> two Skyla, this is just to get our rare candy mostly or you know any other items that we may need last minute, but mostly for our rare candy. We do run two Choice Band. And these may be two cards that I consider cutting. It's just, they've been so good for me, especially um, it really it gives us an edge in our uh, Volcanion matchups because obviously Volcanion uh, is fire, so it hits our Decidueye for weakness, one shots us there. Um, but at the same time, it only has 180 HP. So with one Feather Arrow and a Choice Band attached to our Alola Ninetales, we can use Ice Blade for 80 and then double that for weakness is 160, plus that feather arrow, we're essentially one-shotting um, Volcanians. Um, and Turtonators and Ho-Oh, or no, Turtonator, excuse me, Ho-Oh doesn't have the uh, water weakness, but um, Turtonator and Salazzle, you just do two feather arrows and then Ice Blade those, and you get the one-shots essentially there as well. So it just, it makes that matchup a little more, uh, I wouldn't say even, but more 60-40. Um, and I know a lot of people say, you know, don't play text just for one matchup. The problem is that one matchup makes up a large amount of the field right now. So it just makes sense. Um, and so far it's worked pretty well. So I will continue to play it for now. Three Floatstone. This is just to keep our Decidueyes from getting stuck in the active or potentially our Ninetales or Lele, whatever the case may be. Uh, just Decidueye mostly we want to have on the bench sniping. Um, <clears throat> for DCE, this of course is for our Decidueyes to attack with Razor Leaf or for our Ninetales to use Ice Blade and Coco to do his thing with Flying Flip. So preferably we'll commit one to Coco, maybe two to a couple different Ninetales, and then one to Decidueye. And then our four Grass Energy, this pairs with the DCE for um, Decidueye to do his thing. So yeah, that is our 60 card list guys. So now what we're gonna do, we are gonna hop on the ladder and uh, grab a few games of this. I'm, I'm hoping it performs as well now as it has been for me. Let's see, I gotta dig through all my different lists. All right, and as you guys might be able to see, we're very close to getting to the top of the ladder. I have actually, I don't think I've ever reached the very end of the ladder. So I'm really excited for this one, especially with it being Sycamore. Uh, pretty excited about that one. So Fighting Psychic Water. So maybe, maybe Lycanroc? Maybe not, they have a normal deck box. <clears throat> so we will be going second, which actually with this deck is not a terrible thing because one of two things can happen. We will either start with our Coco, which we do. Man, this hand is amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be able to start with our Coco, put down the DCE, and immediately just start spreading damage. So we want them to build their bench up. We want their whole bench to be full. We want to just keep hitting them over and over. Um, let's see if we can figure out what they're playing. It may be, is it, uh, I'm, I'm betting it's Passimian. It's got to be. We don't see any stage ones or twos, and they only run basics. So I'm betting that's what it is. So we will take these. Okay, awesome. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's Passimian Mew. So the good news about this for us is their damage output caps off at, let's see, what does Mew eventually do? Uh, 120, 100. Mew can do 130. So it still has to two shot our Decidueye. He's never going to take a one shot against our Decidueye. Um, and. Uh, they're gonna fill their bench, so we'll be able to spread a lot of damage, take a lot of KOs. The downside, though, for us is they're all one prize attackers. So we have to take a lot more knockouts um, <clears throat> than they do, which is really kind of a bummer for us. Espeon's gonna be useless in this match, uh, which is fine. Uh, 
Maybe this is a deck I'll build soon. I haven't haven't messed with it in a while. I'm gonna grab this guy. And um, as much as I hate to do it, I am gonna just discard this hand because we do have more stuff in here to mess with. So let's see our prizes. We prized one Decidueye, <clears throat> one Field Blower. Field Blower doesn't matter for us. Oh, we prized a Rare Candy and we're about to dump one. I think it's worth it though. These guys only have 110, okay. And we can actually use their Brooklet Hill to grab our other Vulpix. So our bench is all full. So now we need to get a uh, DCE for Coco to start doing its thing. And we don't. It's okay, we'll put down a grass. We will shuffle back these two. Espeon's useless, but I guess I should have saved that for next turn. That was a misplay, guys. We are gonna Field Blower the Fighting Fury Belt. And the Brooklet Hill. We don't want them having free search there. And we will retreat into our Vulpix. <clears throat> Beacon. So we're gonna grab a nine tails and a dart tricks. What I'm really hoping for is a top deck one of our rare candies because then we'll have a decidueye and a dart tricks up and uh, be able to start sniping a little bit. Another good thing for us is uh, <clears throat> Mew is one of the few basics right now that only has 50 HP. I think there's Mew. And then there's like uh, Noibat that has 50. Those are the only two basics right now I think that have 50 in the standard format. Um, so that's good for us because we can take easy KOs against Mew, just a one shot. That's why we really need to make sure those Fighting Fury Belts um, are kept off the field. That and of course for the damage output. Ooh, Tauros. That's not a fun one to take on. Part of me wants to beacon again. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm gonna do because I'm pretty sure he's just gonna KO. Um, pretty sure he's gonna KO our Vulpix here, but that's fine, we'll grab Lele. We'll have a free bench space and we will um, Sycamore will obviously lay down our tools where they need to go uh, and then we'll Sycamore that way we can actually continue to dig through our deck. <clears throat> what I'm hoping for is that we can snipe just keep sniping around the Tauros and just let them hit us a little bit maybe hit our nine tails a few times and then we'll just take an easy KO but it looks like we're actually gonna get end which is fine uh, potentially getting a better hand than what we had not really. And they laid on that Po Town. All right. So we still get a Sycamore, which is fine. An N. Uh, I don't think I want to use the N. I'm going to put this down. We'll grab our first Decidueye. Now this, of course, is our um, biggest downside with this deck, is it's not moving as quickly as it used to. Um, a lot of you may have played it whenever Forest was around, and it was just ridiculously fast. Um, but now it's kind of slowed down a bit, just because of the uh, 
the lack of forest. Um, let's see, I don't want to give up a KO. Or do I? So I can get down another sycamore. Start taking down the Tauros a bit. Hmm. If I give up a KO, I have spench, er, spench, bench space for Lele to come down. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I know it's a sacrifice, but it allows me to get my Lele down to Sycamore again. And uh, finally get some DCE and start taking some KOs here. <clears throat> or if I top deck a DCE, I'll use the Lele to uh, grab a Guzma and take down one of these Passimian early on. Obviously, we're okay to get rid of both these Bridgets. Really don't need them at this point in the game. <clears throat> All right, so we get a DCE. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start in a good spot. All right, so if I put these on here next turn, I can put one more on him. Or no, put two more on him. Bring up a Decidueye uh, fully built up and take a KO. We're gonna Ice Blade the Mew away. You have to be really strategic when you're playing against a Tauros in a deck. Oh, and they just concede. I think they realized what I was planning on doing. Um, and they're not going to be able to get past it. I'll take the easy, the easy wins there. All right, on to game two. Uh, I really want to see this go up against a Metagross or a Guardi, so I can show you guys how the the devolution works and stuff. Obviously, it's fine if we go up against a bunch of basics. Um, those aren't always the easiest, but they're fun. Is this another uh, Pisimian? Hope it's not. Ooh, Lele start, but we do have Bridget in hand, so not terrible. Could be worse. And the first Mulligan. This this may very well be another uh, another Persimian. Good top deck. Oh no, it's Rockruff. Or, uh, uh, not Rockruff. I mean, it is Rockruff, but it's Lycanroc. So grab two of these guys. And one of these. Actually, with this matchup, Lycanroc is weak to grass. So really, we just need to go all out with our Decidueye. <clears throat> and pass. So next turn, we have the Ultra Ball. We have Skyla. We can just grab a rare candy. And uh, we'll have one Decidueye up and running. I know it's not great, but it's a start. And all you have to do on every single one of these is just put one feather arrow and then just attack with your um, deciduous and they take a one shot. And they wasted their Brooklet Hill. Absolutely wasted it. And I, actually, I'm just going to take an easy KO on the, uh, the active. Okay, he realizes right away. We're not going to count that as one of our three. Uh, I think he realized he made a pretty big misplay. All right, this one will count as game two. That one would have been extremely easy for us. Lightning, Dragon, and Psychic. Noivern, Noivern Garb with some Cocoa thrown in. And sorry, hopefully you guys can't hear all the ruckus in the background. It sounds like my son's upstairs running around. Um, 
Start with Vulpix in the active. I'll hold on to Espeon and see what they're playing. Oh, it's Coma O with Magnezone. This ought to be interesting. I'm gonna have to start jotting these uh, these ideas down, guys. Some people play some weird stuff on here. And yeah, this will actually be a good one to have Espeon out on. Um, and I hate to do it. We got a second more way, two rare candies. There's another one. Turn two, we'll have a um, Decidueye up and running. We'll be able to start sniping. We'll also have a Ninetales up. Uh, potentially um, take down an easy KO on Magnemite before he can get his Magnazone up and running. That will make a big difference. Um, again, these random decks that people play, it, it's really difficult to play against them because you just don't see people playing Como O, uh, especially with Magnazone. Like you, you just don't. But I guess it does make sense. Yet another Rallix, which is good for us. And actually, if we can top deck a DCE, we can take out the active Jengmo. -O. We don't top deck a DCE, that's okay. Um, spread the love on these. We'll hold on to our hand for now. We'll feather arrow the active. And we will just click done. Uh, next turn, we're going to have to decide who we sacrifice, or we can put down a Lele and get an N. But I think I'd rather just have another Decidueye up and running uh, to be able to spread some damage and eventually use Espeon to devolve. Um, our biggest difficulty is actually Como O's GX attack. A lot of people don't know what it is. But what it does is um, for, it's, it's like four total energy, like a, a fighting, uh, lightning, and then a DCE. And it, uh, it does 240 damage flat. It's not affected by weakness or resistance, any of that stuff. Um, so it can easily take out one of our Decidueye. So we can just pretty much expect that at some point. Excuse me. Okay, so I think I know what I'm gonna do this Oh, I don't even have to use my Ultra Ball for it. <clears throat> We're gonna grab Lele to get a Skyla, get out a rare candy. Let me make sure I still have some in here. Oh no, we prized it. Whoops. Then we're just gonna grab an N, I think. Sure, no. <clears throat> no, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab a Gizma. Because we're going to take down this Jang Mo'o in the back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we'll get rid of a Decidueye and a Ninetales so we can grab a Dartrix. And then next turn we'll have another Decidueye up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I know that's probably not pleasant to listen to. Grab that. And we'll take this guy down before we can get him set up. And that way we only have one to deal with and we can just devolve it. Getting those DCEs. <clears throat> I haven't seen any rare candies yet. I would like to think that this person plays rare candies in this deck with two stage twos. <clears throat> it only makes sense. All right, so there's Como. -O. One more energy and uh, he can do his thing. <clears throat> and if he doesn't take us out this turn, we can just evolve him with two, uh, two feather arrows. So we gotta hope that he doesn't get that. And he doesn't, all right, this is awesome. Uh, wait, almost blew that one. 
almost blew it again. I'll wake up, guys. We'll put down this other decidui. <clears throat> and we will sycamore. See what else we can get. Good. Okay. So we will feather arrow twice. I just think we are going to have to pay our treat cost, but that's okay. It, uh, it's worthwhile. Now, of course, we do only get one prize off of this uh, because we're taking out the Hakamo'o. I think that's how you say it, as opposed to the Komo'o. Yeah, Hakamo'o. All right, that's how you say it. <clears throat> There's one of our rare candies. Don't really need it right now. So we're able to take down a built-up Komo'o, which is really, really good. It's allowing us to waste some of his energy. I think what I'm gonna do this next turn is put the DCE on the Komo'o, or the Komo'o, Tapu Koko, um, and just start spreading a little bit. That way we can make more use of our uh, feather arrows paired with it. Actually, no, no I'm not. I'm gonna attach to nine tails and just take this guy out with my feather arrows. Um, I'm not gonna aim, it doesn't really do us any good. And it doesn't hurt them, that's for sure. <clears throat> so once we take this guy out, they have no more dragons in play. Um, let's see, that'd be two in their discard. Leaving them with only two left to build up and they still need to take another couple turns to do that. And like I said, it doesn't look like they're playing rare candies, so. I don't know what their thought process was. They do get their Magnazone up, so they could potentially attack with him. If they have enough energy, of course. They're probably grabbing a Lele for a Sycamore. Yep, there it is. So they're gonna try to attack with Lele, which actually makes makes sense. Okay. So he's going to hit us for 110. <clears throat> hmm. And I'm actually just going to take out his Lele. With our GX attack here. We will put an energy on a Decidueye just in case. And we will Ice Patch GX. Taking two of our last three prizes. to see what oh nope they're just gonna concede there makes perfect sense makes perfect sense hold on guys I'm gonna check this mic make sure it's on yeah okay it's on sorry if that uh, hurt your ears at all all right so now we're gonna see if we can get an actual like true blue uh, meta match here uh, obviously um, Passimian's not really a a uh, meta choice right now so and obviously Como is not so I saw grass lightning metal and psychic of course for Lele and we get just about everything in this hand I don't even know what to think he's playing Tapu Bulu with some metal tech no it's Decidueye all right, let's see what he's got going on. He doesn't have nine tails, we know that. Let's see what we prized here. Um, prized one Dartrix, prized one, no we didn't, okay. Prized one Dartrix, prized one rare candy, one Ultra Ball, a 
DCE and a grass energy. Okay. We'll pass for now. Next turn, we should be able to get our um, Decidui up and running. All right, so here's the moment of truth to see what he's actually playing. I imagine he's got Coco. I'm trying to figure out what the metal would be, though. <clears throat> Still not telling us. We have Latios. Okay, so he's trying to do the snipe. I don't know why he wouldn't use Ninetales, though. It does a little better. But I guess... That is a uh, um, a basic. All right, so we don't even need to use a Lele to get our rare candy. And what I'm actually gonna do is gonna seem crazy. I'm gonna suck more away my second Lele, but we do have the rescue stretcher, so we'll be able to get them back, um, which is exactly what I plan to do. I know we didn't prize it, and we can just shuffle those guys back into our deck this out. I'm going to keep Espeon for now. I don't want him messing with it yet. Really, I should have attached that energy to Vulpix to be able to spread, but that's fine. Um, let's grab a Ninetales. And another Coco. I feel like Feather Arrowing back and forth between the two of us isn't going to get either of us much further ahead of the other, but if I use Coco to spread on the whole whole uh, bench, we have a much better shot. And obviously our strategy in this match will be to uh, use the devolution, obviously. <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out what the metal would have been, or unless I'm just seeing things and maybe it wasn't metal. Let's see what this other tech is. A green, okay. All right, so he's getting his devolution set up. So what we need to do is before he can devolve us, and all right, that's not gonna, okay, that disrupts us a bit because we don't have um, our rare candy now. So, not a bad play, I guess. Um, let's put you down. And as much as I hate to do it, let's end. And I just need to get my nine tails out of the active and let Coco start spreading a bit. We don't get that, but next turn we have Gizma. For now, we're just going to have to pass. So it looks like he's going majority um, towards the uh, the Decidui. You know, he doesn't... He, I mean, he teched in Latios a little bit, but it's more just kind of for little tiny KOs, not for big stuff like Ninetales. And he's going to take out that Rowlet, which is fine. Sick of mooring away a lot of resources. It's two guys. Okay, that isn't a bad play. And we'll start spreading. If I do enough spreading, I can actually make something happen with my Espeon, which is exactly what we need. He's probably going to take out our other Rowlet this time as well. He's already used two Floatstone, which is good for us. 
if we can make sure we get rid of all those float stones, we can actually stall a decidui in the active. Sniping is just too good though. And gets out of the active. Oh boy. Could get him to keep wasting his DCE. What I think I'll do though is I'll ace roll up this Coco so he doesn't take an easy prize on it. I'll still put him back down. Play the DCE and just keep spreading. Like I said, that's our strategy this game. This is going to be spread, spread, spread. Uh, this one needs one more to be devolved. This one needs two more. And this one's already there. One more hit on this guy and he's gone. So, we need to get that Espeon. Which is very doable. Okay. Uh, Dip this guy in the active. Because now we're going to get him to where he needs to be. Next turn we'll Nest Ball for the Espeon. And um, Sycamore for an energy. And we should be able to devolve those three guys and take three prizes at once. Should be able to. And there's an Ultra Ball too, so we can thin up our deck a bit. <clears throat> What we really want, though, is we want to top deck that energy so we can guarantee that we get it. And let's see. He's not in a bad spot. Oh, what is he going to max potion the active? Okay. That hurts. We're having to work hard for this one. Oh, and he's going to take our nine to. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. This guy's brutal. Absolutely brutal. So what we're gonna do, we'll shuffle back our Coco and two Lele. We'll nest ball, grab our Espeon. Grab our Coco out. And we'll suck more. See if we can make anything happen. Okay. So, we'll attach here. We can take out two. I'm not going to put the Vulpix down. Way too easy of a target. So, it takes down two of his guys. So we're, we're we're keeping up, but not uh, not great. <clears throat> I think he's got all of his yeah he's got all of his DCE out, so that's good news for us because we can potentially stall something, probably the Lele, but we have to get a Gizma, and I think we actually use those up. Yep, we use up all three. So we need to just take this guy out if we can.
Um, oh, yeah, we should have done. We should have. Should have put Lele down. Lele could take him out. And we're actually going to lose this game, guys, because Latios can take the snipe on our Espeon and uh, Decidueye's there, too. Yep, he's just going to jump right ahead. Wow, another interesting concept. Everyone was saying Latios wasn't good, but I I don't know. I don't know anymore. He can snipe little uh, bench basics, t you know, two hits, and they're, and they're done. So you tell me. So here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna buy a pack. We're gonna do one quick pack opening. I'm gonna flash the uh, um, deck up on the screen one more time for you guys to take a look at. Um, so obviously the only match we lost was against kind of Amir, but it still shows my point. And the point is Decidueye is still good, even without um, Force of Giant Plants. Uh, like I said, we've seen it uh, top cut at a few different tournaments. So definitely take a peek at it in the future. So we get a Malamar, nothing too special. All right, let me flash this up on the screen. Where'd you go? All righty. So here is our Decidueye list. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know I've enjoyed playing this uh, deck quite a bit. I am gonna make some tweaks. Like I said, probably add the third Lele, maybe a third Field Blower in there. Uh, but we'll have to see how it pans out in the future. But uh, as usual, guys, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to tell your friends about us. We really uh, appreciate you guys coming out and checking out our videos. Uh, but, of course, we'd always like more people to come and hang out with us as well. So as usual, guys, let us know what is in your box, and we'll see you next time.